What's good? I hope all is well. Joshua Grady here. We are in agent mode. Uh, we'll just hop into it, man. It's Draft Diaries. Draft is this upcoming weekend. If y'all are tuned in on the YouTube, I appreciate, well, obviously you're tuned in because this is the only, way, only place that it's dropping. But I appreciate y'all tapping in. If you haven't done so yet, please take five seconds, hit the subscribe. It really helps me. Drop a like if you find value in this video. And we're just gonna dive in. So with Draft Diaries, basically the whole purpose, okay, is to speak on my previous draft experiences and to provide as much tangible insight into my mindset going into this upcoming weekend. It's basically the Super Bowl as an NFL agent. I know I have some aspiring agents as well as some future NFL draft prospects that follow me on the gram, wherever it might be, Twitter, LinkedIn. And so again, this whole purpose of this is to provide value to those just hopefully it can help you along your journey, essentially. So with that being said, right here, this right here, so let me hold it up. So this right here is a portrait, or is it a portrait or something that my now wife, Lydia, made for me back in 2017. So as you see here, I got my two clients. So you got Leon on here, as well as TJ on here. These are my first two clients that I ever signed. And this was something that she made for me right after the draft. On here, I'll read it. It says, congrats, super agent. I'm so proud of you. This is just the beginning. God is so good. And this was after my first draft in 2017. Leon was drafted by the Chiefs, TJ side with the Houston Texans. And it was just an unbelievable experience. And we'll just dive in. So going into this year, I had not a clue what I was doing. I didn't know really too much on the draft. And it didn't know too much about free agency. Like didn't really know too much about anything. And as we got into draft weekend, uh, Leon had talked with a few teams. He had taken some visits. TJ had talked with a few teams. And the only real thing that I knew was, okay, if the guy gets drafted, it's awesome. If they go undrafted, we need to make sure that we try to put them in the best situation possible. And all of this, I was just doing through Google. You know, didn't have a mentor, didn't have someone to look up to, had literally no guidance outside of God and Google. Like that was really it. And so when we get to the weekend, I want, I'll spare y'all the minute details. If you do though, if you want to know more about the tangibles, in regards to how you actually prepare for the draft, how you prepare for your guy that could potentially be drafted or go undrafted, then sign up for our Agent Academy. You can find out more information. Shoot us an email, gsafootball.com. Shoot me a DM at agentgrady underscore. But we'll just fast forward to draft weekend. So it's day three, both of our guys, we knew neither was really a, a high rated prospect, highly rated prospect. I had no idea what was going to happen. I'm sitting in my living room. TJ is right here on the couch. Leon is watching the draft with his family. And I basically just remember I'm sitting there and again, like I'm raw at this point. Like didn't know what to expect. And I just get this call from, I think it was like a 214 area code. I could be wrong, but it's the sixth round and we're just watching the draft. And one thing that you want to do as an agent is you just want to mark. Like both of them were safeties. So I was really just keeping tabs with all the safeties that are being drafted. Just in case they went undrafted, um, you know, you want to make sure that you send a client to a place where they actually have an opportunity to make a team. OK, so that's the whole basis of what you're trying to do. And so I'm just marking off, you know, draft picks, things of that sort and texting with a few teams. At this point, you get to the sixth round. Uh, I mean, teams are reaching out, trying to put together free agent deals. I remember the Cardinals in particular was like, yo, we want to sign, get, get something done. But Leon immediately, this and that. And my whole basis was, look, if you want to, you know, sign our guy, you need to draft our guy. Like, why would I agree to signing a deal with you when you have more draft picks left? And so that was my whole philosophy was I wanted Leon to get drafted. TJ, we kind of knew he was not going to get drafted. The basis for him was we just want him to get signed so he that so that he has an opportunity to compete. And so with Leon, basically what we did was um, just texting teams teams are reaching out what are you hearing do you think he's gonna get drafted this and that and i just remember i get a phone call because teams are calling you like they're calling or texting so you don't know what's what who's who and i remember getting this phone call i think it was a 214 area code and it was basically this guy was saying hey joshua i don't even remember the name and he was like hey joshua we're gonna take your guy Liam McQuay with our next pick and I will never forget it. My very first response, was, and this was the Chiefs, my very first response was, are you joking? Like, that was what I said. I said, are you joking? Because it just came out of nowhere. I was like, the Chiefs? Leon hadn't really met with the Chiefs, hadn't talked with the Chiefs. I had never talked to the Chiefs. 
And he said, we're gonna take your guy Liam McQuay with the next pick. And I thought he was kidding. Like I thought someone was pulling a prank on me. And it just came to show like my youthfulness, I guess my inexperience, but also just like how joyous I was at the moment. I just couldn't believe it. Like I could not believe it. It was so surreal. And one thing about the draft, just so y'all are aware, now one, not every team is calling the agent. So not every team calls the agent. Some go directly to the player. But in this particular case, they called me as well as understand like your player will get a call or you will get the call maybe three or four picks before television actually sees it. So your player is gonna know before the family, friends, everyone, for the rest of the world. And so I just remember as soon as I hung up, I texted Leon, I texted my friends, turn to ESPN, 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 ESPN. And I just remember buddy, little kid was like, Leon McQuarrie, Kansas City Chiefs, or Kansas City Chiefs are like, Leon McQuarrie, DB from Southern Cal. And I was just so excited, you know, so excited. I could not celebrate too much. A tip that I would give to any aspiring agents, don't watch the draft with a client, okay? So, and I've done that multiple times. Multiple times I've regretted doing that. Like, and just having TJ there, you know, I couldn't really celebrate, can't pop the champagne, nothing, because TJ's still not on the team. He's watching it with me, okay? And so it's like, it was, it was weird a, a bit. It was a little weird, but, you know, you're just happy. I'm just happy at the moment. I will say I did not feel like it was something that was earned. That's one thing that I've realized, especially like it, it's, it's interesting to me seeing agents tout their draft picks in the way that they do with the arrogance that some do, especially when you get into like some of these first round picks that to be honest was going to be first round picks regardless of who their agent was. It is very interesting to me. And for Leon, what I learned very early on was Leon getting drafted had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with my preparation, had nothing to do with anything with myself. And it, like I said, it honestly didn't feel earned. It didn't feel deserved. I just signed Leon, you know, four months ago. Me and him did not have the most interconnected uh, relationship. I don't know if that's the right term, but Leon is kind of just a more reserved person. And again, I just didn't feel like it was earned. I don't think you're going to find too many agents that are as transparent as that. But for me, it did also show like, yo, with this draft process, if you sign the right guy with the right intangibles, one thing with Leon, like credit to him, he was able to ace his interviews. He's very smart, very intellectual, did very well when it came to running his 40 time, things of that nature, and he just looked apart. And it showed me as an agent, especially through this pre-draft process, like all you really are is a filter from teams to the player. A player gets drafted because of the player, not because of you, not because of who they sign with. I think that's something that players need to understand. So often that I get, like, I remember there was a guy that we were recruiting and probably gonna get drafted this year. And he was saying how he was signing with his other agency because he felt like they would put him in a better position with the draft. I'm like, man, you have no idea really what you're saying. Like, it's just a big misconception that if you sign with this agent, you're gonna get drafted higher. Now, there are obviously intangibles, or excuse me, different variables that come into play where you're gonna train, conversation with teams that do have a minimal role, I would say, but Leon in particular, it just had nothing to do with me. And so very grateful for the lesson learned. Uh, I will say if you're watching this on the YouTube, we're gonna drop a clip at the end of this. So stay for the whole thing. We'll drop a clip at the end of this so you guys can see like what that moment was like for him and for his family. And I'll be doing that for the rest of the videos that we dropped throughout this week. And secondly, with TJ, TJ, we really knew he was gonna go undrafted and the plan was, we just want him to go to a situation where he can make, and ro make a roster, okay? So based on safety roster fit, schematics, injury history with safeties, number of locks that a team has at the position, things of that sort. And I remember it was maybe like two to three hours after the draft, uh, the Texans who are one of the very few teams that were like, okay, they've shown interest. We believe you can go there and make a team. We believe that'll be a good opportunity. The Texans just kind of called me. They said, hey, is TJ Mutcherson still available? I said, yes, he is available. They come through with a contract offer, signing bonus. You know, you talk over some of the specifics. She just said, yeah, I want to roll there, done deal. You sign them and both guys are there. And for me, you know, that was my first year. Um, and that was really it, like it was a blur. As we get more into talking with Jordan Byron, I will be able to give you guys more of where I came into play or where I felt like I came into play. But in my first year, it was just a blessing, you know, to be able to sign two guys that I knew from high school with Leon. He played, he was a sophomore when I was a senior at Armwood. And then TJ was my best friend growing up, known him since I was seven. It was just really an opportunity or a situation that I fell into, a situation that God just kind of ordained. And it really helped me on the path that I'm on, you know? So 
that's really all I have in regards to these two right now. Leon is retired. So Leon is retired. He has multi songs that have gone platinum. Music really was his first love and I'm glad that he is doing that. Uh, but he played two years with the Chiefs. He's retired now. And without him getting drafted, you know, I don't really know where GSA would be. And you got my guy TJ. TJ's actually signed with the Edmonton Eskimos right now. So TJ's going up to Canada. I want to say in August, they just pushed back the season. And that's it. You know, that was our first draft class. Um, a lot of lessons learned really just showed me again, you know, you just have to do your responsibility as an agent. All you have to do is stick to your responsibility. You talk with the teams, you, you set your guy up with trade, things of that nature. But when it comes to draft weekend, ain't too much you can do. Okay, so like next, this upcoming weekend, we will do the same things. We will prepare accordingly. We'll look at every roster for Grant and Jason. Y'all tune in to see what happens with them. And from there, you know, it's really in God's hands. So that's our first, I guess, uh, episode of Draft Diaries. Not too, you know, in depth, but stay tuned because I think what will be more impactful is actually being able to watch because that's what matters to me. That's what matters the most to me. I remember after the draft, I go drive, I go see Leon. He's got his Kansas City Chiefs hat. Anyone that knows Leon, he's smiling all the time. All he does is smile. And I'm just asking him like, how are you feeling? Like, I'm excited, I'm excited, <laughs> you know? And being able to see the joy in your player's face, like that is where it's at. It's not about the money. It's not about the recognition. It's about being able to try to help your young men achieve their dreams that they've been dreaming of since X age. And so that was our first draft experience. I'm very grateful for it. And that's really all I got in regards to this. Stay tuned for the rest of the week. We'll be dropping snippets of this. We'll get a little bit more in depth of where my tactical, I guess, thought processes came from, things of that sort as I grew into my career. But stay tuned, we got a visual dropping right now. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We out, tune in, peace. Once a year in April, all the hard work comes to a head. Good to see you, man. Today is a draft party for Leon McQuay III. Leon was one of the first players to play for me as a freshman. But Leon now has an opportunity to go to the NFL. The Kansas City Chiefs select Leon McCoy, the defensive back from Southern California. Leon McCoy!